Welcome back to our Intermediate and Advanced Civil 3D training video series. In this video, we're going to create the alignment for the pipe network that we have. And then we're going to create a profile and we're going to add the pipes to the profile and take a look at those options. So just quickly, I'm going to draw a polyline along where all my, my structures are. And I'm going to make sure I snap into the structures. I'm just using the center O snap right now. So I don't need to zoom in too terribly close. And I'm going to go along and snap my alignment as such, or my polyline as such. Now I've drawn it from the right to the left. So under the alignments drop down, I'm going to create from a polyline. And I'm going to reverse it so it does. Actually, I'll leave it the direction it is. So if you put it on a printed plan, it would line up. I'm going to name it pipeline alignment. It's going to be center line. I'm not going to place it on a site. I'll leave all the styles as such. And I'll hit OK. So now that the alignment has been created, I'm going to come under Profiles and Create from Surface. My pipeline alignment with the existing ground. I'm going to make sure the style of the ground is under existing ground and hit OK. Make sure I'm happy with everything else in here. And then hit Draw Profile View. I'm going to name my profile view name the same. I'm going to keep it at a 10 times vertical exaggeration and hit next. Station range, I want it to model the whole one kilometer, give or take. Next, I want it to build from top to bottom and just automatic build. Now, there is a pipe pressure network command to automatically add pipe networks and pressure networks as drawn to a already created alignment and profile. This is great if you only have what we have on our screen here. One pipe network, one line, one direction, nothing else going on. The second you have side roads and pipes in other locations that run parallel to your alignment, you're gonna have start having problems. So for what we're doing now, I'm gonna leave this turned off and I'm gonna add the pipes and the structures manually. We'll hit next. I'm not gonna place any bands, I'm not gonna hatch it, and then I'm gonna select create profile view. I'm gonna place the profile just to the top right of my surface and we see a representation of the existing ground. Now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna select my pipes and my structures and I'm going to send the alignment to the back. So when I select the pipe and a manhole, I know exactly what I'm clicking on. Now because we're only we only have one line for the pipe network, we could do a right click select similar. However, if you have like I said before pipes that are not on the main run, it could potentially cause issues and you might not be able to add them to the profile. So we have to be very careful what we're selecting. So I'm only selecting a manhole, I'm only selecting a pipe, one manhole, one pipe, and then finally the last manhole. So if I was to run the select similar command, it would have also grabbed this pipe with this catch basin. And those as well would have been added to the profile view. So once I have my few pipes selected, I can right click. Now, if I inadvertently select a label as such, and I right click, we don't have the contextual menu that pops up for pipes. So again, you can only select structures, you can only select pipes when running this command. So we can right click, draw parts and profile view. It's also in the ribbon up here, draw parts and profile view. So I'll select that, draw parts and profile view. The command line says add network parts to profile. Select the profile view, and I want to add them to this one here. Now zero on the profile is zero on the alignment over here. So the profile is technically backwards to the alignment. 
Now we can reverse the alignment, and I thought I had reversed it when I made it, but apparently that didn't stick. So I'm going to select my alignment, and I'm going to reverse the direction. We don't have anything built into it right now, just some pipes and pipe networks. Um, there's no station equations, there's no road design, so it's not going to make a huge issue. So now that the profile is built, we can take a look at it. And we can see that there are some backflow related issues, but that was mainly caused from us changing the slopes that we had before. So these two pipes, there should be a 60 millimeter drop between the two, and I'm gonna approximately measure. And Civil 3 is gonna tell us 0.6, but again, if you think that our profile is 10 times exaggerated, 0.6 divided by 10 gives us 0 0.06. So there's our 60 millimeter change in elevation. So sometimes I do my designs through the profile view because I can very easily come in. I could select a pipe, and if I had to, I could match the inverts. Now these grips are on the invert at the bottom inside, the center line, and the obvert. And it's easier to grab the grip, type 0.6, as opposed to going into the structure properties, connections, and doing the math. So just a couple different ways of, of working and making things a little bit easier. Now as we go along, I'm gonna change a few settings through these pipes as well. Now, these pipes are the same, they're both 300 PVC. If I go into pipe properties, and as you've noticed, I'm accessing pipe properties through the profile view instead of on the plan view with this. So a 300 diameter pipe, and again, the, the broken rules and whatnot, I believe are due to the pipe network catalog. So 0.32% is the minimum slope. My part properties. In this case, my start invert, end invert, my end invert is 1139.511. That's the one I wanna keep. And as we see, when I hit apply, the pipe has shifted itself up. I can then go to the next pipe and drag the grips up and, and snap the grips together. And then a quick 0.6. Pipe properties. We want to hold the end invert, and I'm just looking at this because this elevation is higher. I'm looking for the higher elevation between these two. So my end invert is 1140.159. I want a pipe slope hold the end, 0.32. Now we haven't gone through and designed any of the flows for these pipes, and we just put some imaginary pipe sizes in the drawing very likely they're not correct based on any flows and the pipe sizes would change a lot more often than they are now. I'm going to finish this one last, 0.32, and we might as well just finish off the very last one here and wrap the uh, profile bit up and take a look at potentially some broken, uh, some violated rules as we get way too close to the surface here. 0.32. All right, so this last manhole is now very close to the surface, if not sticking out of the surface. If we run a pipe properties on this last pipe, we will see that we are violating minimum cover. Now, minimum cover where I live on a storm pipe is 1.2 meters. Uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna adjust this. We're gonna leave it as is. But this is again where you can see information. So minimum cover violated pipe properties through the profile view. It is the exact same pipe properties that we view through the plan view. So both of these are the same pipe in the same the same object type, and we can look at properties on our surface we can look at properties on our profile. You could also look at all the properties in your tool space. So if we look at the, the panorama style window at the bottom, 
this does tend to get incredibly laggy with the more information that we have in here. But everything that we need is right here. If we wanted to change the style on mass, we could right click on style, hit edit, and we see that the entire column has changed. Rule sets that are applied. We could set all the rules at once, or we can come in here and tell that which rules we want it to use. A lot of information is available in this panorama window. But again, it does get fairly laggy with the more pipes and the more structures that you do have. If you want to view all the information at once, this is kind of the only way to do it. So changing one pipe at a time is probably the easiest, easiest method without too much lag and too many other options getting in the way. Now within the edit network dialog box, we do have the pipe network Vista, which will bring up again, the Vista that was at the bottom of the screen. We see structures here and we can scroll over and we can and look at some of the options, Eastings, Northings, elevations, reference surfaces, but it, it's still fairly laggy. If we look under pipes, the, again, that same information is here. But as I scroll over, we see that it is, again, fairly laggy. I don't suggest changing any information through these Vista windows, because this, if you're on pipe four and you come over and you actually click on a different pipe, you might be changing the wrong information. So very methodically, very logically, work from the lowest pipe to the next highest one, to the next highest one, to the next highest one, as you are designing your system. So one thing I do very much work extensively through the menu bars and through the on-screen commands, I don't tend to rely on the ribbon all too much. However, I want to point some, some stuff out for any new users of Civil 3D. When you click on an object, the ribbon changes. So let me hit escape and we can keep an eye on the ribbon up here. I'll click on the pipe again and the ribbon has changed to pipe related commands. We have add labels dedicated to pipes, add tables, dedicated to pipes. We have network properties, which will load up the storm network properties. We have pipe properties, which will load up our, our right click pipe properties menu. So if I right click pipe properties, it's the exact same as clicking on it and going to the ribbon. I find that working off your model space and through the menu bars is kind of the fastest way to do it. But there are options up here. We can connect parts. However, you can also do that through the right click menu. This one's just not disconnected. So it's, it's not going to give you any of those options. We can look at parts list. We can draw parts in profile view. We can run an interference check. Now this interference check is actually quite handy when you have a storm and a sanitary network in the drawing. It will analyze the two and check for any related crossing issues. If your pipes are too close together, if they're cutting through each other, if you have a pipe going through a manhole, it will check for those. At this point, I don't believe it analyzes it with the pressure networks of the water. So those have to be done manually. We can analyze gravity network. It will, it'll resize pipes and reset inverts, compute energy according to various standards. It does, this doesn't work for where I live as we use a different system, but there is the analyze networks. We could create an alignment from the network as well. So I could have used this as the original command and launch storm sewers or other express related tools. So the last two videos were on setting pipe inverts and changing information and changing the pipes and allow and showing how they flow from top to bottom with uh, without a profile and then adding them into the profile. Thank you.